Hello again everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you're tuning into this for the very first time then check out all of the other videos that we've done covering the Heavy Division Boeing 787-10 mod for Microsoft Flight Simulator and that's converting the Sobo 787-10 and allowing loads of additional functionality like the holds that we're in at the moment so it can fly automated holds and all sorts of other stuff, Simbrief integration and more and all the links will be in the description below. Most likely though, you've just finished the last episode and you are wanting to follow on for the rest of the flight as we make our way into Manchester for this little full flight ferry from Gowick to Manchester. We're in the hold at Dane and as I mentioned before we're going to exit the hold so at this point now I'm going to click exit hold and it gives us the option to cancel exit. We can click that if we want to remain in the hold but we don't want to exit so we click it and we hit execute. Once we reach Dane the aeroplane should then fly off towards the airport. In all likelihood we're now going to be told to exit Dane, leave Dane heading 360 degrees for example and it will be descend 4000 feet. So let's bring our speed down flaps one. Make sure you guys click subscribe while you're here and give us a like if you've not done so already. Okay so leaving the holes all we've got to do is click select there, heading select because we've already armed the heading to the one that we want and we want to now descend down to 4000. You remember from the previous video we discussed how we're going to be landing on flaps 25 and the setup for that inside the MCDU and the setup for that inside the FMS. Next stage of flaps. Flaps 5. Loads of stages of flaps here so plenty to play with. Flaps 10. And we're now vectoring ourselves around as if we were on ATC with Vatsim for our final approach. Let's continue down to 3000. And we'll bring our rate descent down. We need to set our minimums for the approach, something that ideally you'd have done a little earlier and uh, we're going to go for Cat 2 ILS, Category C aircraft because we're having quite a slow approach in today, 140 or so knots and uh, the DH is going to be 350 so make sure this is set to Barrow for MDA so we click the collar in and at the bottom of the PFD you can see it's set to 200 so let's change that to 350 and we need to come out of standard pressure of course and make sure that our QNH is set the current pressure is QNH 1020 at Manchester and as always monitor everything as we go let me just check the METAR at Manchester again so it's not changed and it's QNH 1019 now so let's bring that down there we go got the terrain map on as well because of course as you can see there's lots of terrain to factor in here for the approach into Manchester so it can make it particularly difficult. Let's bring that range right in shall we so let's do five nautical miles. When we're happy as well we could turn that terrain map off. Come left, 350. Flaps 15.
I'm 17. All the lights and everything are on as required. That's fine. Just trying to avoid some of this terrain. Let's come down a little bit more. We're going to target uh, 162, shall we? We can see the airport off in the distance. So we're working to establish on the ILS. You can see we're under the glide slope already. In the previous episode, we checked all of this as to make sure that everything was input as it should be. And we need to make sure our speed brake is armed. Let's arm AP2 as well. And we can start to turn for our intercept of the ILS. Flaps 20, I think. Jeremy, you want to try and intercept it at around about 30 degrees. There's the runway right off in the distance. I have slightly overshot this, but not too bad. We're going to keep turning round. We're under the glide slope, so it's still okay. We can manage. Bringing the aeroplane round. It's always a little bit more difficult when you're trying to record stuff at the same time. A tour can do everything else. I'm sure you guys will do better. And uh, we're about to actually intercept the localizer, so let's descend just in advance of that. And arm lock mode. Instantly it's gone to approach because we're on the glide slope, but that's fine. Gear down. Let's get rid of the terrain map. And there's the runway. Flaps 25. And we've gone gear down as well. So, in here, whilst it's flying itself, on approach you can see that we've got 25 degrees, VREF at 144. So let's make sure we've got that set. And in we go. Frustratingly, we've now got a bit of a tailwind, which is not ideal. It should be variable at 2 knots. But we've committed to it for the purpose of the example, we're going to just continue. And everything is set up as it should. Let's get our missed approach altitude set ready as well. And don't forget in this to disarm the auto throttle before you touch down. Two red, two white on the puppies. We can see that vertical lateral guidance on the primary flight displays look both uh, perfectly aligned where it should be. So that's good. And a thousand foot. 
Let's disarm the auto throttle, so that's now under my control. And when we're happy, autopilot comes off as well. Which we now. And we're flying this in ourselves. One thing I should note, picking all the right times to do stuff, aren't I? Make sure your heading bug stays aligned for this final bit. If you have to go around and you enable autopilot again, you want it to fly runway heading. Here we go. Touchdown. Reverse thrust. And we've got our auto brakes working for us as well. Enough brakes for us to come off. Flick that guard back over and we can now think about configuring after landing. So landing lights can come off, strobe lights off as we leave the active runway and we can also make sure the APU gens are on and flick it over to start. At this point Manchester Tower would be giving us vectors to taxi to wherever we're taxiing. And don't forget on the ground it doesn't taxi very well so you're going to have to use differential braking if you've got it. And whilst you're managing all of this, <laughs> bring your flaps in. bit of a knack to get in this right. Here we go. Same principle on the ground at Gatwick as well, make sure that when you are steering, you don't steer for the nose wheel, you steer for the main undercarriage. So you want to make sure that the main wheels at the back are actually between, you want the yellow line between those at all times. And TUI use Terminal 2 at Manchester. This is Maco Simulations Manchester Airport by the way folks. If you've not already got it, check the links in the description and there will be a direct link to the product page for this. It's exceptionally good freeware, um, it's exceptionally good payware, £9.99. Direct from the developer, and it's one of, if not the best, payware scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator at the moment. And we taxi on in. the fire station. Got one of them out just in case. That APU should be on there. You can check that by going to status page and you want to see RPM on a hundred. There is a bug with that at the moment which is why it's not turning on. But 
there's not too much of an issue for us. Round we go. Allowing that nose to come away from the yellow line for the turn for the main wheels. I'm so pleased that there's a uh, mod for this that's actually making some great progress. All the ground equipment here as well is the Latin VFR Arex scenery for the EU, so we get little raw mail vans scooting along the runway in the airport. What's great about the Mako simulation scenery is that the ground textures have been mapped so that all of the vehicles follow the roads only. They don't go driving all over the runways or the taxiways um, very much at all, so that's really good. I've given you guys the right grand tour of the, uh, the scenery. And we'll go to one of the heavy stands. And park up. We'll do 204. Uh, 204. Might as well. It's right in front of us, isn't it? So picking 2A4 right, which is the centre one for the heavies. And turning. Can't wait to do some long calls with this. There we go. Can't break on. And we can now turn off the engines. So down the bottom here, fuel control, cut off, and cut off. If you've got something like Pushback Express, switch that on. Let's get our beacon off and that as well. Taxi light should have come off as well, whoopsie. And we can now configure the, for the turnaround, shut down, and end our little flight. I hope you guys have found this little mini series useful. The heavy division mod for the 787-10 Microsoft Flight Simulator is really, really good. So the team are making great progress, more than more than I'd have expected from the Sobo 787, which was an aircraft that, to be honest, I'd given up on back in about September just after release because it was so raw, not very good at all. So finally we can look forward to things like medium, long haul flights and well, just some wide body flights even if they're short haul. So be sure to keep your eye out on the channel for some of these trips coming up soon. Check out all of my other tutorials as well. Be sure to subscribe if you've not done so already and don't forget to give us a like as well. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you found it useful and I hope to see you all in a live stream very soon. Thanks for watching.